Everybody, welcome back to the Good Old Boy Podcast. As always, thank you very much for tuning in. If you're a returning listener, I appreciate it. If you are a first-time listener, thank you very much for finding us. Good to go. As always, guys, if you're going about life, something is maybe not clicking, you're experiencing drift, you're experiencing some form of a, I don't know, you just have no direction, you need to talk to somebody about something, do me a favor, jump in the show notes, click on the form to schedule a 15 minute quick call let's just talk see what's going on maybe there's something we can do maybe you know talk about something weighing on you you got something troubling you you got an idea you want to start you don't know where to go but just let's have a conversation so guys we got a guest in the audience we haven't had one in a while i'm very (laughs) fortunate for this man to come by and uh review my setup and my goods he's been in the background sean What'd you have for lunch, man? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? My name is Sean Archibald of Wisdom Media, a digital content creation company. And, um, man, today I had just a little bit of Starbucks. I had some Starbucks for lunch today. But for uh, breakfast, I had some peanut butter uh, kashi cereal and uh some hash browns it was a great one that but uh, good, man. yeah man I, dude, th- this is kind of like surreal because i feel like i've listened to your um your um show so often and then it's like like listening to you give the intro and i'm like here with you it's kind of yeah, weird huh? yeah it's kind of wild <laughs> when i was when i was sitting on y'all's and for y'all uh sean is the man behind the media the mixing the mics the video all of it for the otg podcast which i was on a while back and he uh man he You've been a help for me just being able to be a sounding board. It's amazing how that network. But when y'all were there and doing your intro and y'all were reading it too, I'm like, all right, this is how it gets made, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of see how the sausage is made, man. Yeah. It's yeah. it's so it's so surreal. Like whenever I was going upstairs and I was like, all right, this is the studio. This is the studio or this is where I get killed at. But uh <laughs> but man, the studio was so thought out. The angles, the mics, the equipment, the layout, the comfort of it. So uh we, we've been spending a few minutes now going over my new setup and my mm-hmm. uh, situation here. So, and man, I just saw something to know that's going to be in the background. I'm like, oh, that's going to bother the hell out of me. <laughs> but I like the setup. We have. Well, actually, it's not. I'm looking at the video now. No, it's it, not in there. So it, it looks it looks good. The colors look really good coming out of it. Um, the natural light coming in through the window. Um, I like the setup because it feels um, very like lived in. Like it doesn't feel like some like production studio. It feels very much like this is just my spot, my kind of my my area. I don't really know. Like yeah. it's like the, like it's cool that it's your office and it's like everywhere you look, it's like a little piece of Buster everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like from the you know from the painting to the books to the skate Santa Cruz skateboard up there, which is really cool. Um, it's just a lot of personality. Like yeah. I, I see the sword on the wall, the Scotty Cameron. That's 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 sick, man. This, this is really cool. I appreciate it, I, yeah. I, man. I always want this room to be comfortable. Whenever I have either people in here or I'm in here, mm-hmm. uh, you, you want to see something cool? What's that? Alexa, turn off its lights purple. Hey, how's that light look? <laughs> Dude, that's pretty nice. You man. like that? Pretty what nice. you th- that's pretty look better, purple or white, or what would be better lights? I don't know, man. I think I think that can be something that you kind of play with though a yeah. little bit, and it's just like you can have almost like a command set up with Alexa to be mm-hmm. like, all right, you know, podcast mode is on or something. Yeah, you know how like a lot of times where you um you'll see it like at a studio like on air or something mm-hmm. is like red, like a red blinking light. It can yeah. be like a red light or something or I like that. Yeah. That could be like a kind of a look and it's like, all right, this is, you know, we're in podcast mode right now. I tell my kids all the time. I was like, guys, daddy has like a childlike mentality about things, but he's got grown up money. So we're going to be okay. (laughs) Like all my kids, all my kids rooms have the lights that will change and dim. So at nighttime, I'll be like sleepy time and everything shuts down. Music starts playing. It's, Dang, you know, man. you're like, uh, you're almost like a little Tony, got a little Tony Stark setup going on around here. I mean, it's bad. It's pretty awesome. At one point during COVID, I had like six monitors going across here. It was Dang. ridiculous. So, yeah. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm a nice. Or, I'm a little geek out like that. So. No man, I'm same here. I'm I'm, I'm a very tech uh, tech forward, tech savvy. I guess whatever you want to call it type guy. I love I love new technology, new like little trinkets, stuff like that. I'm a, I'm a fan for sure. What's the uh, What's the eyeball on for the newest piece of technology you looking at? Newest piece of tech. So right now, um, as far as like that goes. I know that the new iPhone came out and all that, but um, it's not super interesting to me. Uh, the good thing about Apple com- um, products, for the most part, they make them really well, so well to where you don't have to upgrade them every single year. So mm-hmm. um, I just I have an iPhone 13; it's been working fine. Um, but what's really on my mind is uh, lighting. I'm really mm-hmm. looking for better lighting and better sound for like my uh, photo and video setup. Yeah. So right now it's pretty good, but a friend of mine is gonna sell me a, a pretty nice light um, that's lightweight portable and that's mostly what i shoot for because i do a lot of like kind of run and gun i'm just set up real quick and then we're going to move to the next thing you know and type of shooting so it's like it has to be it has to fit a couple of parameters to really make it into like my kit really so yeah yeah, lighting and um probably like new mics or something for my wireless setup just something that's cleaner better sounding so you got the roads no i don't have the roads um i'm kind of i'm kind of cheap (laughs) (laughs) i'm kind of cheap so i always try to like i've seen the roads and i was like man those are cool but for the money i'm like there has to be something else out there there." I, i didn't even know what they were i just saw everybody on instagram where in the roads and everything, I'm like, oh, how much are those? And yeah. I'm like, it's like two. I think they were like two hundred bucks at the oh, time. Oh, three hundred. Yeah. To get the two, I'm like, no. Yeah, yeah. I was like, there has to be something else out there. And um, me personally, I don't know about you, but I don't like when people have the big receiver yeah. on their <laughs> on their neck. I was watching a video once where there was two people recording, right? Two people in the frame both of which had two separate videographers and they're making two different videos. They're making the same video from different perspectives. Yeah. So there's two and both of them had two receivers on their neck from the other. (laughs) And I was like losing my mind. I was like, dude, no way. Like, yeah, no, I couldn't do it. Yeah. Well, you got to be efficient when you're doing these things. I mean, we just, you came in a little while ago. We ran through my whole setup, everything we we're trying to like my setup, how I record video, how I record audio. Yeah. Thank you too, because I started looking at lighting also yeah. when I was doing mine. And you, whenever I went to y'all's and you know, the lights and everything, I'm like, I need better lights. So, I mean, I just got me, <laughs> and this is the thing, how cheap I am. I have this simple like ring light from when my wife and all had their boutique business that was just laying around. I'm like, I'm just going to play with that. And yeah, see what happens. Yeah, yeah. And I've liked what's come out. Mm-hmm. I don't just probably could be a lot better, but it also, it could be a lot worse. So yeah, I'm a huge advocate for that too. Like use what you have available mm-hmm. instead of, um, always cause I've not like, um, you know, gum coming into this content creation gear acquisition type thing. It's like, I never always had the money to get the, new, the newest, best, shiniest thing. So, a lot of times I'm shopping like the scratch and dent bargain section of mm-hmm. it. Like I'm like, hey man, where's the you know? Okay, that's cool. That came out. This this is version five. What's version three looking like? You know, yeah. <laughs> let me see what those what, look like. Was it you that said the other day on the podcast? I, I want to attribute this to you, but somebody had said like, you know, what would you say to somebody? And it was like, get really good with cheap equipment or like yeah. the lower quality equipment because if you can get if you can get good with that. Then when you get the big stuff, because nowadays I know guys that whenever I started my podcast and what I did and going through and they're like, hey, what did you do? What did you get? And I, I just said, well, this is what I got. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've got a Blue Yeti mic sitting down here on the stand. Yeah. I should put that on the bookshelf just for looks. <laughs> there you go. But, uh, but then all of a sudden I knew guys who like went out and they probably dropped like five grand on stuff. You know, everybody had it. I'm like, wow. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't. You don't need to get some skills on it first, you know? Exactly. Yeah. I think um, it it's like, it's kind of a tough one because I, I also believe in buy it nice so you don't have to buy it twice as well. There you like, go. I really, certain, certain I really things. like that. Like, and when I think, yeah, like you said, certain things. So it's like, when it comes to cameras, get you a nice lens, get you an, um, the body's kind of, 
they kind of vary because yeah. the the lenses can last for a lot longer than the bodies do. So I would say get you a nice quality lens that you can see yourself using for um, quite a bit more than just this intended purpose. Like if it's like, oh, it's a portrait lens. Oh, I'm going to use it for wide angle. I'm going to step back a little bit. I'm going to use it for telephoto. I'm going to step up a little bit. So I'll get you a nice mm -hmm. lens that can really stand the test of time. Um when it comes to, I think, mics and lights are two things that if you are going to spend a little bit more money on, I think that that's kind of worth it. And also, too, if you're going to spend a little bit of money on something, I would say get you a decent computer. Um, at the end of it all, we need a way to process all these things. You know, mm -hmm. we need a way to. So it's like a good computer. And like I was looking at your memory over here. Great. Have a backups backups yeah. on top of backups because man you you never really want to have some crappy memory and it just like you know poops on you in the middle of uh, a wedding or whatever type of content creation you're doing and now you just lost it and you I, lost the backups and everything else i had several instances where i was recording podcast and everything just crapped out yeah. and it was like I just lost it all, and we were a good forty-five minutes in. So, yeah, yeah. So, how did you get into content creation? Because you, I really like. I got to give a shout out to Jared for this because Jared has kind of brought together this band of guys around here, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Who, and I told my wife like one of the first times whenever we went to El Cubano, and we all had cigars and everything, and and it was me, it was you, it was Phil, mm -hmm. it was Jared, it was Fernando, and, and everybody, you know. I think that was everybody there. But I, I came back from my wife. And I'm like, these guys are cool. I was like, I like these guys. They, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. were talking things on a different level, man. But yeah, so yeah. It, how did you get into this content creation space? What you know? What what brought you into there? Um, it all started with a picture of a cigarette box. I guess is how I can like really kick what it kind off. Of but cigarettes. It was a um a friend of mine had I I had been taking pictures when I was like in uh, I want to say eleventh. 10th grade in high school I was kind of screwing off I really had no direction class clown you know how that whole thing goes and I never really found anything that I was really really like liking you know yeah. um, I always had like a little um, I always had like an inkling for like uh, like drawing and kind of stuff like that but never really pursued anything and so I would take pictures of people's cars and, you know, my friend's cars and just what our going ons of the time and edit it on my little Android, you know, my slide or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, but people were liking them. They're like, oh, man, these are sick. Oh, man, that looks good. I'm like, really? You think yeah. that looks good? I was like, yeah, OK. You like it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So after that, um, later that year, um, my mom, my friend took a picture of a cigarette box and this was just right off the camera, flash, just right, like, boom, right on it. And it was just super blown out. Um, in retrospect, probably not a great picture, but it was, like, to me, it just looked so cool. Like, it mm -hmm. looked so, like, high quality. It was just in his hand, and it was just, like, this was really sharp, and everything in the back was out of focus. And I was just, like that's so sick like how did he do that i was like man how did he yeah what did he do to do that like that was before every other phone camera had great cameras like phones yeah. weren't weren't built like that you know at the time if you think about it like the progression in the past 10 15 years of like what phones went from to what they are now is insane really uh 15 years ago, I was carrying around a phone, but then I also had a little Olympus point and shoot or something like that to go along with it. Yeah. And now, man, it's you can you really can do everything on an iPhone now. Yeah. Yeah. If, he, if depending on what you're doing, you can do a lot on there. Yeah. Family you, vacation. Yeah, you can do a lot. Can, yeah. But, but, you know, for the quality of work you're doing, man, I see everything that you have. And I'm like, yeah, you, you got to, if you want to do it right, you certainly have to step it up. Yeah, yeah. So what kind of a cigarette a, box was it? So I think it was like Marlboro Reds or something, man. It wasn't even anything crazy, <laughs> but it was like... It tells me it, a lot it, about who you were hanging yeah, out with. Yeah, it just kind of kicked it off. I don't even think the guy smoked, which was the funny part. I think it was just someone else's cigarettes. <laughs> but um, that's what really kicked off me having any type of interest in taking pictures. And so um, I told my mom, I was like, hey, my birthday was coming up that year. And I was like, yeah, you know, this year I just want a camera. That's all I want. And my friend actually, uh, who took that picture, 
he gets into things and gets out really fast. So he was selling that camera and it was a Canon T1i and my mom bought it for me that year and I just would take pictures like crazy. Every chance that I got, I was like walking around. I got my big old DSLR and I'm yeah. like, we go to like Chipotle. I like sit it on the table. There you I'm go. Like, Dude, I'm bringing that thing everywhere with me. And um, uh, I had got really, I was like, man, you know, I'm really liking this. This is cool. This is the first thing that I was in high school. I was like, dude, this is something. I found my thing, you know, I found mm -hmm. my thing that I really like. And uh, later that year, we had some people from like the Art Institute come out and they're like, hey, you know, we're, we're, uh, we have photography classes. It's like 90% um, hands on. And I'm like blown away. I'm like, dude, it's all falling into place. I'm going to, I started taking pictures. I really like it. And I got a camera. I'm loving it. And now I'm about, about to go to college for this. This is amazing. And so uh, they're like, yeah, it's 90% hands on. I'm like, great. We shoot all the time. Great. Edit all the time. I'm like, dude, it's this checking is all the boxes. Checking all the boxes. And then so um, I graduate. And a little bit, a couple of weeks later, I actually called the Art Institute. I'm like, hey, you know, my name is Sean. I'm, um, I, I'm, I'm interested in enrollment. And uh, they're just like, yeah, well, yeah, you know, you'll come here and it's a three year bachelor. And they're telling me all the details and all that. And I'm like, hey, OK, man, like, I don't mean to cut you off or nothing, but I was like, how much does it cost? Yeah, there <laughs> like, we go. Like, I was like, tax title and license. Like, mm -hmm. what, what am I looking at? Right. What's the damage? And he's like, oh, yeah, well, it'll be like 80K. And I was like, OK, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. um. I'm going to talk to you like never click. <laughs> just let, kinda... me, let me talk. To, I got to free up some funds. Y'all hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me call out, uh, Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me move some money around in my Swiss bank account. Right. No, but I was just like, it, it um, that like little dream there kind of, it didn't really die, but it gave me like a little bit of perspective. I was like, Ooh, man, was that... I was starting to shoot uh, more and more. Not really for people at that time. I was very, very like, green very freelance i was just shooting whatever i could um i told this kind of story on um on blake's pod and i was uh I, uh saying that i like to use this from the keen state to the squat rack mm -hmm. is like i like to shoot at the time and even now i'll just shoot just about anything um yeah and try to be I, as versatile as possible i have noticed that about you you're you're it, it's like you are got a food truck Mm -hmm. with the inspire the coffee guys yeah then you're you're in the gym you're in the you're, you're you've got a lot that you're looking at mm -hmm. when you come to you i mean you did shoes the other day yeah and but that just tells me that you're just working on your craft yeah you, know, you yeah. got people who are like i only shoot this mm -hmm. it's like okay i mean in pigeonhole maybe hey you become the best whoever shoots weddings or portraits or cars or whatever man but I don't know. I like somebody that's not afraid to get into it and be like, I'll go, I'll try whatever. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. I'll just about try, I'll try just about whatever. Um, so when they told you it was 80K for that school, was that like your first bit of resistance into where you found something you really liked, you wanted to, you were like, yes, I'm going to go do this. Here's some, oh, it's like you said, it was all lining up. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm not, that's out the window did, I, did you see that as any kind of resistance to it or like was it just i gotta figure something else out i think it was you know um yeah i guess you know thinking about it it was a bit of resistance but with that resistance i was like i need to figure it out yeah mm -hmm. it wasn't it was like one came because the other it wasn't like oh man the resistance came all right i'm selling my camera it's yeah. like it was just like oh okay cool well let me figure it out let me see if that's even plausible you know to do i would and and this was in like 2013 2014 so it wasn't like this was the first or second cameras out you know that mm -hmm. we um photography um more on the photo side was a very very um relevant you know form of you know making a living making a living so i was like man let me try it out let me try it out and just shoot and just see what i can learn on my own so um I enrolled at uh, old YouTube University, man. And Hell yeah. Hell <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you checked yeah. my settings. That was YouTube oh, University. Man. Yeah, I'm a YouTube University alumni. I went back a couple of times and come back out. Yeah. I still study. So, mm -hmm. yeah, man. Um, I'm always I'm hosting on. classes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So, um, yeah, I started doing that, just looking at a lot of YouTube, getting, um, putting it on. A, 
putting in a lot of like the reps i guess i guess actually shooting trying things out uh one of my big things was always uh shoot as much as you can like something i always try to tell people that are coming up and trying to really get into uh content creation or um just photography videography i always tell people i'm like just try stuff just try stuff get your camera and i would always tell people uh get a crappy camera that you don't mind like beating around a little bit because Mm -hmm. i encourage people to take their camera everywhere if you want to get used to shooting on it all right take a bunch of pictures probably don't they don't they are probably not going to look the best and that's fine and then you take those edit them find out where you made mistakes go and do your research on how you can fix those mistakes and then you apply those to the next time that you go out. So, um, yeah, just try to shoot as often as you possibly can. And um, so from there, I would just take pictures. And anytime I got a, um, a chance to shoot, I would. And eventually I started, people started giving me money to take pictures. And I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> you're you're going to pay me to do this? <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> so that was wild. And um Things really started to change once I uh, got a job. I was working at a pawn shop for a while, and it was like in a real kind of rough spot in my life. Like um, I started working there when I like I kind of I, I don't think I had a car. Uh, don't think I had a camera for the like first time in a long time. Um, I didn't have a camera, like a dedicated camera, and uh, I was biking back and forth to Waterburger. I worked at Waterburger for like. Which one? Uh, it was the one in, um, it's the one that's in Seabrook. Or it was in Seabrook, but it moved oh, to okay. Kima when they did like all yeah. that uh, reconstruction and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was that one. And when it was in Seabrook, I worked there for like probably like a week or something. Mm-hmm. I'm like biking back and forth. I get there and it's like, I'm like, they're like, how old are you? I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like 23. And they're like, wow, you're old. And I'm just like, <laughs> Damn, I, I I don't think I'll ever forget that in my life, dude. I was like shaking to my core. They were like, oh, yeah, our night manager is like 19. And I was just like, I hate this. I hate everything about this. And so um, I got a job at a pawn shop and I was just there like for for a while. But um, I picked up a lot of work, a lot of clients from there. I got my first uh, wedding shoot there. Um I uh, did that, and I was I was freaking I was freaking out just because I had never done something like that before, and it was the large is the most money I'd ever been offered to shoot anything. How, can I ask uh, how how much was that? How, how much do you think it was? I'll give it. first one. How mm-hmm. big was the wedding? Uh, it was pretty big. It was pretty big. It was a uh, um, Mexican and a white family, so it was pretty. It was oh, pretty they got big. money then. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of people there. Ten thousand. Nah. Five? Five hundred. Okay. Five hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. Five hundred bucks. But dude, my eyes were like boom. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know what to think. And so Isn't that Isn't that amazing whenever you start like some kind of journey? You're you're like going at something, you're like, I think I want to try this. And you get that first one, and it's like, you're you're gonna pay me for that? Yeah. Like, hell yeah. <laughs> So. Yeah, man, it's um, you know, it was it was crazy. It was really um, it was, I, I didn't know what to do. I'm think I'm sitting here like, man, I got this budget now. <laughs> you you know, got I, got, budget. I got a budget now, and um, I remember uh, um asking a friend because I was gonna shoot video there. I didn't shoot video really at the time, so this was like one of the first. This was also my first big wedding and my first bigger um uh video shoot so i was very new at that and i was just like oh, okay cool and so i remember reaching out to a friend and he canceled on me like i want to say oh, like man. a week or two before the wedding like he was like no i can't come i can't come he was gonna i offered photo and video um very stretching myself very yeah. thin and um P- I, I was, push it try yeah, it. i was what? like oh yeah yeah let's do it photo and yeah. video figure it out perfect yeah and i Build a plane on the way down. Dude, dude, yes. And he cancels on me. And I'm like, oh, man, okay, whatever. So I'm like set in my head like, okay, yeah, I'll just shoot it myself. I'll just switch back and forth. No big deal, right? And um, my uh, friend of mine, real good friend of mine, his name's Josh, he came through and way more um, experienced than I am as far as like just uh, the the professional shooting. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was very intermediate. 
uh, freelance, just kind of walk, do the camera, starving artist, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know, I was that, I was that guy. And um, he, he came and I wouldn't have been able to do that wedding without him. Yeah. And, and that really put a lot of, that, that really put a lot into perspective as far as like um, the experience, the time and effort it takes, the, um, how serious you need to take it to be able to make a living off of it. Like he, um, he was the first person that I had ever met, like in real life. Of course I've known, like I've, I know that there's professional photographers out there and videographers out there, but it's different when you know the person and mm -hmm. he's the first person that I ever met um, that was making a living off of it. And he's not, I think he's like a year or two older than me. I don't, I don't even know if he's that much older than me. When you saw him for the first time from your friend, and there was that different aspect of like him on the job, mm -hmm. I guess. Did you look at him and be like, oh, this isn't the guy I know? Yeah, dude. It was like a total, yeah, exactly. Um, totally different. Um, yeah, totally different like demeanor. Um, and not like in a bad way. It was like he just like clicked yeah. it on. And he was just um, really, he knew like the perfect angles. So we shot at this, this place called the Springs. It's a venue that's pretty popular. Like there's like probably like three or four in the area. And a lot of people shoot, uh, go to mm -hmm. and do their weddings there. So he had shot at one before. I'm walking around just blown away about like how beautiful the place looked. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, we've yeah, been here before. It's yeah, yeah. He was like, there's another walk, walk in the park. And so he knew like exactly like great angles to put these people in um great poses to do uh what what we should be shooting what we shouldn't be shooting and i'm like just <laughs> there's some points i'm like have my camera and i'm like got my camera down i'm just like watching like what is going on here mm -hmm. like this dude and i'm like oh shit i'm supposed to be filming yeah. you know and i'm like oh man but it was um it was really cool man to see um a true professional at work and um i i, I carry that shoot with me like all the time like any time yeah. that i go onto a shoot i always uh hope because it wasn't even just like the professional it wasn't even just the fact that he'd been doing it so while well for for so long but it's like the confidence that you carry when you yeah. have that um that level of professionalism it's yeah. like oh yeah yeah this is this is, this is good this is easy we'll yeah this, this is we're going to work here. This is what we've done. And the benefit to have him like be willing to step in and be like, I got you. Yeah. You know, that's, I, I tell that to a lot of people in business and a lot of people just in life really like, Hey, you really, if you've gone through some stuff and I say this all the time is that you've gone through some stuff and you experience and you see somebody getting ready to go through the same thing. Like, man, you better step up and be like, Hey man, let me, let me, show you something real quick whether you know it, we can put this anywhere put it in the gym put it in photography put it in podcasting put it in like parenting put it in marriage any of those things yeah and i think nowadays people are like want to guard that information so much like just yeah. hold on to it and no 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 i can't Ooh. i can't share that with you i can't like here i am like i'm coming hat in hand to you like Sean, you know, I'm, I'm a 42 year old father of three, you know, and you saw what I was dealing with out there. Like, yeah, I, I got this camera. I don't know what to do, man, but you checked everything. You set it up. I like the angle. Like I wouldn't even thought about that. Yeah. The sun through the, through there though, is kind of getting me with the stripes right here a little bit, but I don't know. Oh, oh like in a back. Oh, it is like, it is kind of a lot of them. Okay. I didn't see that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it happens. At least our faces are uh, clear. So yeah. that's, that's good. good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, the, hand, but, the handsome detection still works on there, right? <laughs> but but yeah. yeah, man, that's, oh man, I'm like, like, as soon as you said that, it like kind of struck a chord in me. I'm like anti gatekeeping. If I can, oh, um, I'm, yeah, when it comes to the creation process, if I can share it, I'm, I'm 100% willing to. Yeah. Uh, yeah but, that's. <laughs> How many successful people, how many, like, so there, there's people who are big creators and you go on their YouTube, like you said, YouTube University, and it's on there for free. And they're telling you everything about it. And it's like, he's giving it away. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. there's, no matter what you give away, there's something there, though, that y you just have to witness, I feel like, in some aspects. You got to witness somebody doing it. They'll tell you everything. Then you got to go put the application. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm definitely more of an. Um, that's why I think with the uh, art institute when they said they do they do a lot of hands on work, like it just like my ears perked up. I was like, ooh, yeah, because yeah. I think I think I just learn better that way if I can see someone actually doing it. It sticks with me like I can almost remember that first wedding like it was like I was there, you know, and it's just like, oh, man, I remember, you know, we did this, we did that. And like how, you know, you carry yourself in these situations. So it's like, but yeah, anytime I can share information. um, Yeah, I think about it the same way. It's like I go to YouTube. I learned it off of YouTube usually. Mm -hmm. So it's like if that person was like a gatekeeper, I'm not going to tell you how I uh, adjust my settings for outdoor shooting. Then then I wouldn't have known. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't have known from him. I would have went to someone else, yeah. you know. So it's like, uh, yeah, anytime I can help, man, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy. I, I really believe that sharing, sharing your professional knowledge, sharing your experience, sharing all of that, is the bridge building to networking. Because mm-hmm. when you're, you know, if if you're willing to put it out there, share with everyone, that person will be like, "Where'd you learn this?" Oh man. Because that's that's everybody wants to know that when you're really good at something, when you've got some kind of a skill, when you've got some kind of man, where'd you learn that at? Well, I, I did this, but then I really got it from Sean. Sean, like, you know, if someone's asking me, you know, what, how'd you get your video going, man? Sean, guy over there, he set me up. He looked at my stuff. He he answered my questions. I wouldn't have been able to have that. I'd probably be stuck still with my little webcam stuck in there yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh man i think i i agree 100 percent. i want to say that last year around this time like my instagram page was probably kind of uh, just stagnant just that's the one that i'm the most active on so i guess i'll use that as like a kind of a um testament to uh sharing more is is definitely better because um i used to like i I was kind of like kept to myself like i would like people's pictures and if i really like that i would be like oh man that looks really cool but Mm -hmm. it wasn't as common as i have lately in within this Mm -hmm. past like year or so um so i started reaching out to more people and being like why am i like afraid to tell people that i know that i like their stuff like this is that's yeah. kind of weird like i need to just be like yeah no i like it i'm a fan i'm a fan of your work I'm, yeah. a, I'm a huge fan of the work that you put out and i don't care if anyone else knows or i know or you know i want you to know that i like it and that's fine mm-hmm. and so um i started doing that more i started doing the like i guess i don't want really to want to say st- series because it was on stories and so it's gone and you know, uh, um, an instant, but uh, I started doing those more like creative tips where I just sit down and just kind of talk about things that I use in my creative process that I think other people can use to, you know, help them mm-hmm. or like just talking about things in the photo and video world where I think it's kind of interesting. Like I was talking about a camera release a couple of weeks ago. I was like, Hey man, what do y'all think about this coming out? And, um, all those put together, man, it's like, uh, I feel like my Instagram has been a lot more just like lively, more people reaching out, mm-hmm. sometimes people reaching out for work, second, you know, oh man, hey, I want you to be a second on my shoot, blah, 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 hey, can you help me do this? And man, it's great. Uh, I love being able to connect with um the people in the culture that I really do admire and enjoy. So it's, that's the, uh, yeah, like you said, creating a bridge, like I want to create a bridge and an impact in Houston photography or Houston creativity really. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So now you do the creative work for the OTG podcast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With, with those guys. Mm. Shout out to them. And you're set up, but man, you're also, you're also in the health space with them too. You're, you're always working out with them. You getting it in too, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I, I feel like all three of y'all have some little like background. You heard that? Yeah. You know what that is, I'm right? I'm scared to look behind me though. Oh, yeah, she's there. <laughs> she's there. In true interview guest podcast style, there's always one of the little Caballero children rooting around and not sell us. She's, uh, she was back there sticking her fingers underneath. But uh, so y'all, it seems like y'all all have a story back there. Mm-hmm. Or there's something that y'all, I don't know, lynches y'all together, puts y'all together. Yeah. So what's yours? 
um, as far as uh, me and fitness. Yeah. Um, man, my story is someone kind of grilled me from wearing a shirt that was too small. And I was like, hey, I don't have a beer gut. And I looked down and I kind of did. So I was like, yeah, I need to, yeah. I need to change something up. But uh, no, I um, once again, going back to high school, I started lifting and everything in high school like senior year i was like really on the on the verge of not walking and at this point in, in high school i was just like if i can get that that's cool i'm not gonna get a championship i'm not gonna get any academic awards at least i want to walk with my class so mm -hmm. that's where things kind of started so i was like straight edge sean i was like at parties like drinking water i was oh, like oh yeah. yeah man i'm good bro i'm not like i'm not drinking tonight and they're like what you're not drinking <laughs> like yeah man i got a backpack like full of dude full of waters like and i'm just like busting out <laughs> water bottles dude just <laughs> and so i was that guy um and i started going to the I'm gym i'm gonna feel great in the morning <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i'm gonna feel great yeah i'm gonna feel awesome going to my remedial math class it's gonna be amazing yeah so um i really wanted to walk so i was just like man let me um let me cut like drinking and like partying and things like that and so i started um working out around that time too and it was very off and on off and on nothing too structured i was just like oh, we're just gonna go and we're gonna hit full body and then go home and eat water burger in between there or something yeah, like that so protein. um yeah <laughs> yeah let me get the number two extra protein please <laughs> but um after a while like this is probably um, my th third or fourth time of being like just in and out of the gym, like that kind of little ebb and flow. And like mm -hmm. lately, um, so when I started shooting more fitness, um, that's when I was going to the gym, like more recently. And my sister was big into the gym. She kind of got me back into it because she just got strong. Like out of nowhere, I'm like, damn, what's going on, man? What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> and, you know, you're over here like deadlifting 400 pounds and all this. Like what's going Dang. on? Like what's, what's up with this? And then, um, yeah, so I went to her gym, checked it out. And I was like, yeah, you're paying $30 a month. How dare you? That's so much money. But it was just like, I went there and I kind of got clicked in with that whole community that built the bridge into that culture. And I was like, oh, oh, okay, I like this. And so I started going to the gym more and um, taking it a little bit more seriously, uh, getting down with like a um, more structured actual workout regimen and then um i had that time when my mom working at the pawn shop and we're just chopping on each other you know busting mm -hmm. each other's balls and this one guy's like man you look like this girl that we know that has a beer gut and i'm like no i don't I, bro oh. i'm wearing this like shirt and i look back now i had no business wearing that. <laughs> I had no business, bro. No business wearing that shirt. And like, dude, I kind of look down and I'm just kind of poking a little bit. And I'm like, oh no, man. So yeah, I just kind of, I was like, okay, I need to, I need to fix this. <laughs> I need to fix this. And so I started getting really serious on the gym, going off. And, and I think it's just a, like such a great, like stress reliever as well. There's definitely been times where something creatively has been really like weighing on me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, man, let me just go, like, run. And, yeah, I remember one day, like, something was stressing me out. And, like, I just went home and just, like, ran, like, a 5K real quick. I was like, okay, I'm just going to run. And just, like, I ended up just, do, 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 just, there like, you, next to, you know, I'm just gone for, like, 3.2 miles. I was like, okay, I guess I'm done. I, that, you know, you hit that, like, the whole when you're stuck with something or whatever, just go work out. Go, go put your body through stuff because it's, like, Okay, if your brain's not gonna work, the muscles need to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was so funny when I got done with the with OTG podcast, I was like, "Man, I really wish I could have like talked about this or that." Or you know, there were so many things afterwards. I'm like, maybe we should do a part two. And that was Amen. one of them. Big yeah. is like you know this the amount of mitigated stress release as well as like just clear your mind to perform, create everything just it it works dude 100 percent. i've came up with some pretty like wacky ideas while like running or like lifting or something like that oh shit. i bust out my phone i'm like you know cracking yeah. out like on the notes app like trying to figure it out but yeah man it really just helps kind of balance me out a little bit sometimes like there's definitely times where it's like life is just kicking you in the ass and it's just like man let me just go lift something let me just go lift I've, something real quick <laughs> i've had it within the last couple of weeks has been a pretty 
pretty intense amount of work and life and things going on. And man, I've just had to either go for a rug. I've had to lift weights in my garage. I'm like, I, I'm just going to do some kettlebell stuff, whatever, get it knocked out. And I'm like, oh, wait, that's a good podcast idea and talk about that and make those notes and things like that. But it, it's, I don't know, if there's something to it. I know there is where it's like it, it probably just depletes all the amount of stress in your body, which is blocking everything. So, yeah, dude, speaking of podcast episodes, I love your episode about the um, the rice episode. <laughs> and like, dude, the amount of times that preparation making sure I was prepped before like going on a shoot yeah. or something has been like either my downfall or like my yeah. like victory is, is amazing. You know, like um, I try to, if I have a shoot the night, like tomorrow, I always try to make sure the night before that I'm like prepped, yeah. you know, batteries are good. SD cards are good. You know, lens choice is fine. Like everything is where it needs to be and at least have that, you know, locked in. Run through the checklist, get it all done. The other the other uh, Friday night, I was prepping. I got asked to go to this men's conference on Saturday. And so I was going to have to get up out and early. I'm a wife. Friday night, she's like, can you just set a reminder to make coffee in the morning? I was like, I'm going to go put the timer on right now to make the coffee <laughs> to get that set so that whenever – the time comes, it just goes off and it's good to go. I ain't got to worry about that. I was already in bed, snuggled up. I'm like, no, nah, but but uh, you, you, that's that's something you got. You got to set an Alexa for that, man. <laughs> Alexa, yeah. make coffee, please. That would be great. Mm. Wait, I wonder if she's gonna say anything like, I don't know how to do that <laughs> skill, but yeah, it, it's. I always say you, you know, like I could have made rice this morning and somehow I ended up making ramen. I got ramen stirring on the, on the stove right now for our friends. We've had a, a Sunday night ramen fest, but yeah, <laughs> so sounds nice. but I heard it the other day, you know, mom, I don't know the last, since I became a father mm -hmm. and especially since I had my baby girl, I've become obsessed with like, how do I get better? How do I get better? How do I get better? Mm -hmm. What do I need to do? What do I need to do? And somebody, you know, Somebody the other day is like, you know, how do you start your day? And the guy goes, the night before. I'm like, there yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Cause yeah, definitely. We would, uh, you know, we homeschool our kids. And so in the mornings, we were waking up to go. And sometimes I had to be out of here early. Sometimes I'm late. If I've got like a team's call or something, I'm going to take it from the house. But she was like making sandwiches, getting all the lunch. And so now it's like, hey. Let's get it all done the night before. Everything laid out. Everything ready to go. Kids wake up. Y'all know what y'all got to do. We know what we got to do. I didn't know you uh, homeschooled your kids. Yeah. Have y'all have y'all always homeschooled them? For the past four years, we've been doing it. Okay. Yeah. So three three kids. Three kids. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got a ten year old going to be eleven. A seven year old going to be eight. And my baby girl just turned five. Okay. But we uh, yeah, we early on with my son, my oldest. We saw something coming down the pipe that we knew the school system was going to, it wasn't going to mesh well. Mm. So uh, this resulted in an ADHD diagnosis for him. And so my wife was like, what do we do? I was mm. like, I, I don't know. I need to refer to it. And so we started looking at it. And we had some good friends who were like, hey, this is what we do. These are available. So we started on that journey. And I love it. Okay. I love it. My kids have been able to explore more. Now it does have its difficulties. Mm -hmm. You're responsible for the education. And I got people all the time say, I could never homeschool my kids. I'm like, everybody's doing it. It's not that hard. You just have to be able to structure your time and day to be able to get it done. Yeah. And that was one of the hardest things for us is how do we structure our time and day so that they can do their work and we do a co-op. So on Tuesday and Thursday, they go to school. But I will say this: the people involved in this are amazing. Mm -hmm. I love them. These yeah. are some of the bike laid back, let your kids roam, let your kids go. People, so, yeah, and, and yeah, the, yeah, the structure of your day is so important. It, it is. It's, it's super, super important. There's some. I think that that's when, um, and myself included, we run into times where we feel like I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time in the day. I don't have enough time in the day. It's like if I have like a day that it's like, okay, I have to shoot, lift, um, 
go on a walk or you know do whatever it's like man that's such a that's such a nice day because yeah. i know what to expect and what's coming down the what's coming down the pipeline it's the days that it's like i really don't have anything planned and i'm just that's when i get kind of like antsy i'm like ooh, ooh man what's what going gonna, on like what yeah. Am, yeah what am i gonna do am i doing enough am i doing too little am i now i'm scrolling whatever and i'm watching other people put stuff out and i'm like Am I am I doing enough? Well, am, yeah, so it freaks me. That's what freaks me out. But structure is is great. So I've been I've been working hard to like put out a podcast a week, and I told my wife I'm like one of the hardest things right now is to get somebody to come in here and sit across from me and spend an hour or so. You know, just let's let's talk, let's do that. And I love doing this. This is the the this is the fun part of it having yeah. these conversations. And so like. She is on board duty at Little League, so she was there. In fact, she just walked in behind us a little bit ago. She's mm-hmm. heading out. But, uh, you know, I got two kids, and I'm like, my kids are older now. And I'm like, I texted the whole group, that, that group, and I'm like, I have some time. Who wants to come? <laughs> and then it was you. And then Phillip's like, well, I don't want to be busting on Sean. And I was like, I'll, I'll let you know when I'm done here. Maybe I'll get two today. But that was like, yes, I, that's part of it. Mm-hmm. Have structure, have a plan, work the plan, as they say. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I always, um, I always tell people that like my my joke is like I I, I want a dog, I want a dog so bad, but it's like don't do it, dude. I, my day, there's some day like yesterday, I left for work at like. I had a shoot earlier in the day, so I left and did that at like eight, and I didn't get back home until like like three. Yeah, like so it's like having a dog would make it so tough because it's like now but it's like the idea of having like a goofy little guy just like hopping in your car this is my this is my my ride or die yeah yeah. my ride or die dude it's like that idea is so cool to me until like he chews like my sd cards or something i'm like oh man i gotta put you up for adoption buddy i'm sorry (laughs) i've got we've got two dogs and and we have a 30 pound aussie doodle and we have a 70 pound labradoodle oh and so the 30 pound Aussie doodle, like I'll come home and she'll have tore into the trash. Happened last night. The <laughs> 70 pound Labradoodle, like I'll be cooking for the kids and everything. And next thing I know, he's swiping pizza off the counter. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like this, this dude ate an apple the other day, like a whole apple. And I'm like, just watching him. And he's like, looking at me like, you going to come get this? I'm like, no. Yeah. And they're just so goofy. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. I think they're, yeah. so I'd say this. If you get one, you almost have to get two because yeah. then they can keep each other's company. Yeah. And for us, we had dogs, me and my wife previously. They passed away same day. Well, we put them to sleep the same day. Uh, oh, <laughs> by so total sad. coincidence. It was yeah. like one of the strangest things. We're like, we're really doing this? Yeah. Like, that's. That's what, tripped out. It, it was. Yeah. And, uh, and then for a while, it was kind of nice because like, oh, I didn't have to worry about dogs were taking care of it. And my wife was like, I really like this dog. Look at this one. Which resulted in me and my boy driving to like Dallas to pick up this dog <laughs> in Weatherford, Texas. And while we're there, we're at a pig show. So yeah, that's a okay. tangent I can go down. <laughs> <laughs> I, seen a, um, I seen a TikTok the other day and dude, it like, I don't even have a dog and this one hit me in the heart, but it was like, uh, remember you, your friend, your um dogs are your best friends for like your whole life but you're their best friends just for a short yeah portion of their life something something along those lines and i was yeah. like oh. <laughs> oh my god uh, every once in a while like even with these dogs because my other dog was named john wayne and everyone's all be like john wayne and keller look at me she's like what i'm like my bad. So, <laughs> but that definitely hurts losing one of those yeah 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 so so what's your process like? You, you know, you said, we, we said, you know, your processes, your, your schedule out and everything like that. What's your process like after you, when you've done a shoot and gone through it and looked at it? Cause you asked me like, Hey, you got any editing software or what? And I'm like, yeah, man, yeah. I'll spray and pray. I'll record <laughs> this. It will be up and ready to go. The YouTube cards going straight in and going up to YouTube. I'll yeah. probably put a thumbnail on there or something, you know, you but go. that's it. What's your, what's your process? What, what are you looking for? When you do this, okay, so that's, that and I don't want to say this because I see people who are content creators, mm-hmm. and I'm like, what are you? What are you really creating? What are you looking for? What are you trying to bring out? Okay, I guess is my, you know, yeah, all right. So, um, I guess I'll go through like the pot. I'll use our podcast for an example. Um, so 
podcast day. It's a Monday. We usually roll in there around. It depends on scheduling. Usually between two and five, we're going in there. If we have a guest, we try to get there, um, talk with them, kind of um, introduce ourselves. So we're all um, pretty knowledgeable of each other you know mm-hmm. in some cases we know the pe- the person quite a bit beforehand so we can kind of hop right into it in other cases everyone's new to each other so mm-hmm. um i get there first and i leave usually about an hour to 30 minutes before phil does from the gym and i go there turn on all the lights make sure everything's good there get the camera set up make sure they're all good there so we have three lights three cameras and four mics and the um, recording, like, focus right, the roadcaster. So those are the three. Those are all my responsibilities, making mm-hmm. sure that's all good. So I go through, I hook up all the cameras, make sure the monitors are good so I can see um, everyone's angle. Uh, and usually about that time, that's when Phil or Daryl or the guest is walking in. And so uh, we kind of talk, and I get them all set up. Um, I get them on the mic, get their... Um, their headphones on and let them talk a little bit talk about their day talk about because you don't you don't want to yeah exactly that's that's my cre- if if there's any creative tip that anyone can pull from this episode is if you're getting audio from somebody don't get them to just deadpan check or check one two or whatever get them to talk about them or their day or what they had to eat or the traffic even getting over there it's a little bit more of an accurate representation of like the inflections of their voice how they're really going to sound when they're talking and it can help you dial in your audio a little better a little bit better so yeah ask people about them and it can probably be a good icebreaker to find Mm -hmm. out more about this person because you you have very good vocal presence on here like oh, as i'm man. watching it i'm like i'm looking at the the spikes on here and i'm like damn <laughs> but you're a professional you know that so i feel that- like i'm always whispering like i'll look at my um i'll look at my audio all the time and i'm like dude it's like little shrimp little yeah. audio <laughs> like, look, look, if you look at it right now it's like okay there it is oh, yeah no, yeah no no, little, no 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 louder yeah, louder yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah little shrimp audio and i'm like yeah i just try not to like blow anyone's um you know like i don't want to like uh spike anyone's audio but so i go there we uh we we do the episode and i'm like all right cool i have like four sd cards that i'm responsible for the three from the three angles that i talked about prior and then the one from the roadcaster i take all those and i bring them to my computer and i make a folder first uh episode 94 Mm -hmm. and then i put it in there and as i'm taking them I'll plug them into the uh, into the computer through a micro SD card reader or a, a SD card reader, and I'll change the name. So I'll do episode, and I just kind of recently started doing this. This whole thing like evolves quite a bit every yeah. just about every time that I do it, and so um, <clears throat> I go through and I'll put episode ninety four cam one. And then I'll just bring that over. Boom. Mm-hmm. So that's in episode 94 now. I'll go to episode 90. And I'll do that with the other camera yeah, angles yeah. and stuff like that. I'll make a place for the audio. And then so now all of those are taken off the cards. The cards are back in their respective place. And now I'm ready to start editing um, the actual episode. So when I'm editing the episode, I'll usually take the audio first and do that. So I'll take the audio bring it into and i use adobe um software so um adobe premiere um adobe uh audition for the audio Mm -hmm. lightroom for um pictures and uh i use a lot of canva for my like thumbnails and other stuff like that. that's what i use Uh, canvas canvas great and and don't let anyone tell you that canva's not great it's a easy tool and it works really well for a lot of people oh yeah so i can i've gotten good on my phone that's what all my thumbnails have been fun it's like it's like there it works yeah it's good Dude, i use a lot of uh to make the thumbnails now our thumbnails used to be kind of boring mm-hmm. and so we did like a little bit of research and looked at other people's thumbnails and we're like oh yeah people have people in their thumbnails duh. yeah so <laughs> what i uh, what i started doing is i would take a clip from the show and i just take that 
bring it over to my phone and I'll long press on it to where it'll like mm-hmm. cut you out and then I'll just send that up to Canva and be like alright cool or I'll, yeah. I'll, air, I'll airdrop it back into that same folder Yeah. so um, I go into light, or I go into audition with the audio and I get the audio all set up I add a little preset that we have on there to really boost the audio so that everyone sounds really good really clean I take those separate tracks and I send them back to the audio um, part of that episodes file and so i send those over there and then i bring once that's all done i bring all of that back into premiere now i'm in the video editing part of it so i'll bring the video in and then the audio in i sync those up through just a uh, software premiere will allow you to just like press one button and it'll sync it all together right so i'll sync them all together and i delete the um audio that i'm getting from the cameras because uh, there's like dirty there's like dirty tracks and clean tracks i think is mm-hmm. kind of what people call it but the the scratch audio is, the, is yeah. a better word for it so scratch audio is the audio that you're getting from the camera and it's not going to be the audio you're particularly going to use uh for your production but it's a good like marker to get your real audio that you're getting from the focus ride or the roadcaster synced up so you don't have to sit there and meticulously try to, try sync, to sync it up so you can sync it up easily with just you highlight it all right click synchronize boom and nice. you're and you're ready to go so i'll go through i'll do that and i'll get the audio lined up and i'll cut the beginning and the end to make sure that um, i'm cutting out any stuff at the end and then Mm -hmm. i get it right on where the intro starts so i get that started up and um i we use this podcasting software called autopod which has been a lifesaver as far as time goes and what this does is it'll scan through your uh timeline and see and you can have like your um your pre- your presets in there so i have like a uh tuesday otg pod or for or friday otg pod and what that does is it has like your amount of cameras your amount of audio and how frequently you want to cut in between these two and how you want to cut in between these two so what it does it'll scan through it go through the whole thing and i've posted this a couple times on my on my story and it's just like just cutting it cutting it cutting it for you so it's switching in between your camera angles without you having to do it and um it's pretty good it's i would say it's like 95 percent good sometimes um like uh phil is a is a type guy he does that and so he'll do that and sometimes the camera's like what'd you say and it'll go (laughs) it'll go to him so it's like someone yeah so yeah someone's like yeah man so yeah when i was a kid i was just going through this rut and it's just like cuts to them so uh i you do have to go in and kind of make sure that that's uh that that's okay but yeah i let that um that software do its work it cuts in between my epi- uh cuts in between all the cameras as many as i provide for it and then i go through and i bust out my little notebook and i'm just making clips from there and i try to find just some real banger clips that would be good for um for the client or ourselves, whoever's on, you know, whoever's on, who's ever's on, ah, not client, but our guest. Yeah. So whoever's on there and, um, or like, you know, for the page or whatever, just like very good, shareable, you know, information. And then I'll go through and like, it depends on timing, but I'll kind of like add some flair to it. Add yeah. some like little goofy, you like did, little animations you're very good in there. At that. I like, I like that. The ones like you sent me whenever I was on there, I was like, how did he do this? This is like so <laughs> awesome. But I didn't want to be that guy and be like, how did you put the little subscribe button on there? Or what? Oh, I'm dude, like, no, yeah, I'm no like, problem. What the hell? I was like, there's a good video I can send you um, from Canva uh, that that does that that uh, okay. that does that. Like, there's a there's a guy that talks about which I didn't even know you can do this, but he was like, yeah, there's a like a way you can use Canva to do these like subscribe buttons and stuff oh. like that. So. Yeah, man. I mean, I was I'm, showing my wife, and she was like, "Look at you!" I was like, she's like, "What?" She's like, "Where? What? Who are these guys? What do they do?" This is first class. I'm like, "I know, <laughs> dude." Thank you. I appreciate that so much. It was, uh, it, it's, it's a good time, man. It's really cool to be in a position, and it's like it, it it's almost like a pinch me type moment, really. Like, yeah. it's like I'm um, because way at the beginning of this whole thing we're talking about i was like standing at my friend's house 
outside or by a pool on the phone with the art institute kind of bummed out that i didn't have 80 grand to just throw with these people mm-hmm. you know and then like just the landscape of just content creation and cr- and how that's changed it's allowed me to have to be in a position where i can work somewhere and i create like not really far from what it, this isn't like it wasn't like i was shooting like rock shows or something now i'm doing this and it's totally different from something i already do it's like this aligns very well with what i was doing at the time i was shooting a lot of fitness stuff um Mm. around that time uh when i first started at otg and still now it's like oh i'll definitely shoot you know fitness and small business that's what i really try to focus in on and it's it's pretty it's pretty wild to think about that like man i get to make things like this and i'm allowed to make things like this that are that are fun it's like it's like i have a lot of fun it's like dude there will be times where i'm in there just like cackling laughing at like an edit yeah. or something like this is just it, it's it's crazy it's really wild to think about sometimes <laughs> it, it i think people are made to be creators i think that's one of the best things in the world people you have to create something i don't care if it's like video photography a podcast food uh you know, plays, whatever. It, yeah, I mean, you could be cre- be the creative person who who builds furniture, but people create things. That's what they do. It's it's in us innately to do that. And I mean, just think if you would have went through the art institute and and gone through that, you might be you might have almost put yourself in a box to yeah. say like, hey, you know, this is the style. This is what you do. Would you? Do you think if you'd have gone through there, it might have like, I don't want to say this. It might have like just put blinders onto you with the possibility of what you could do. Yeah. Cause it seems like afterwards you're just like, screw it. I'm going to go figure out everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that, so at the time I knew nothing about like student loans or interests and how much like that could really kind of change like, just the trajectory of your life 80k i couldn't imagine having to like pay back 80k yeah and like you know with probably (laughs) every single picture you sold or video you did would have been gone to that exactly and that's the thing that i think could have um and that's why sometimes i tell people don't get super expensive gear too you know that's something that can really kind of pigeonhole you to where it's like i'm not shooting this because i like it i'm shooting this because i'm trying to pay off sally may or are you really gonna enjoy it yeah exactly it's like are you really gonna be in it are you really gonna you know you oh man i gotta pay off this five thousand dollar camera i got you know a credit card Mm -hmm. that is zero percent interest now but it's gonna be 30 plus percent interest if i don't pay this thing off so it's like and then you're taking the deal like where somebody Somebody's like, well, uh, you maybe you charge two fifty for something. They're like, well, I'll give you a hundred. Like, well, it's a hundred bucks, so I'll take that. Exactly, and go that. And then, exactly. And then are you really doing what you want to do? Are you really? Because you're gonna think about. You're gonna if you it's, have to take that big of a cut. You're thinking about it the whole yeah, it's time. In your mind. The whole time I've been there, where it's like I, um, like I said, I was bargain bin shopping. You know for a reason it's like i just didn't have the money i just didn't so it's mm-hmm. like i would take some jobs where i was like yeah well i'm at 300 and they're like oh yeah well, i got like 150 and i'm like well, i guess i got 150 let's do it you know yeah. and it's like it and it is what it is i think um and i encourage people to take um to shoot as much as they all um as much as they can i do think that people should do free work um in you know, within certain parameters, yeah. of course. Uh, weddings for free, I would probably no. stray away from a free wedding. That no. sounds because no, 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 usually, no. if someone has the, if someone is going to take on a new photographer, a new videographer for a free wedding, uh, they're what probably going to be the person with the lowest what? budget, but with the highest amount of expectations. Oh <laughs> God, yes, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, well, I'm going to need you to get uh, the picture of the bride, the groom, the grandma. The great grandma, the great grandpa, the great grandma's grandpa. I'm gonna want all the proofs. Yeah. I'm gonna want the raw. Yeah, gonna yeah, want... yeah. I'm a, yeah. Look, when we started, <laughs> I didn't know anything about this <laughs> stuff. And when we got married, and then when we do like our family photos or stuff like that, and, and it's like, wait, what do we get? And in fact, we're we're going to Colorado next week for family vacation. Nice. And my wife found a girl who does like photos there. It's really cool things. And she, I was like, well, all right, well, how much? And she told me, 
And I was like, well, what kind of photos we get with this? She's like, I got to check and see if we get the photos. I'm like, we're hiring a photographer and we don't get photos. And she's like, well, there's something we got. And I'm like, <laughs> like I'm going to stay in my lane. <laughs> figure, figure it yeah, out. Just, show me, just, just show, show me the me pictures when you get them. Show me the show pictures. Me the one I gotta, which one are we going to post and which one are we going to hang? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, man. It's crazy about that. Yeah. So I think that, uh, like, you know, to kind of double back on the question, I think that that definitely would have, um, mostly because of the money aspect. I, I think that um i'm not saying that the art institute in like college for a creative thing is bad i've never experienced it so i don't i don't know i just know sometimes it can be really expensive and there's a lot cheaper ways to get into it aka just go out and shoot yeah. so it's like but i think that the, some people need it though yeah that that information that you learn in there can probably be invaluable i have no idea you got I, some people who can watch a watch something figure it out get it done mm mm-hmm. mhm and you got some people who are like, I don't know how I'm going to get this done. Exactly. Yeah. Totally, and, and they totally need different somebody. ways. Yeah. I, I always tell people, like, just quick story was, when I was in college, it took me three or four tries to get through accounting 101. Mm-hmm. And like, who? Like, it was a struggle. Yeah. I couldn't get in a classroom. Yeah. I became a banker after that. Uh, and I was like reviewing financials. And I had guys who were like, no, nah, this is what you look at. You look at this as... After that, I actually went and worked for my dad, who was a banker again, but we were doing a labor company. Okay. And I learned numbers from him. Mm. And he was like a high school graduate, but knew it, learned it on the job, showed me it. I could break down financials. I knew books. I knew debits and credits. When I left out of there, we fired our accountant. Didn't fire him, but we didn't need him. All the time. Because you were able to do it. I was able to do it. Yeah. And I saved us like 60000 And when I say, can I get 20 of that <laughs> for me? And they were like, no. I'm like, damn it. Okay. <laughs> but they were like, but here's a weekend in New Orleans. So I'm yeah. like, all right, ah, good enough. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. But but that's the thing. Some people need the classroom to learn. And some people need, and in fact, afterwards, I went down to Moody Gardens. I was their internal auditor. I was tracking money every day, making sure we had it. There you go. And they were like, what's your, what's your background? I was like, on the job. Yeah. So some people are good with on the some, job some training. Some OJT. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> and some people need, uh, some people just need the, uh, the classroom. The classroom. Kinda, yeah. Yeah. Like, um, I'm, I was, uh, I'll always say that I'm pretty terrible when it comes to math, but I feel like when it came to learning a little bit more like simple math and like the importance of, um, percentages and, um interest was i learned a lot of that from the, the pawn shop i was yeah. like oh my god people are paying this much interest on these things that they're just leaving in here sometimes yeah. i was like that's insane and it's like there it just kind of went i went down the rabbit hole of like figuring out and then you know you get a credit card and other stuff like that and it's like dude this is nuts like yeah. it's nuts the amount of money that you um that will just get kind of yanked from you without you even knowing yeah. you know so it's like uh yeah th- that uh you people learn in different ways People definitely learn different ways. Man. Sometimes people really got kicked, got to get kicked in the teeth yeah. to learn a lesson. And sometimes people just need to look at it. So exactly. Everybody's different. Yes, so sir. People yes, going to people. Yeah, people <laughs> going to people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But yeah, no, man, I well, mean, that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much the what led me to what I do now. Well, okay. man, you're very good at it. You're very talented. Thank you. Thank uh, you. You're, you're very kind with your time, too. And your your knowledge and what you do, so man, kudos to you for that. That's, that's the only that's way great. to do it, man. You're 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 helping a lot of people get better, and man, you're getting better. And I know it's 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 coming back on to you for that. So uh, we've been here a little while. I want to be respectful of your time. So Sean, tell everybody how can they find you? Where you get, drop all? The, you know this part, right? <laughs> yes, you know sir. This part, so yes, go sir. ahead. So yes, like I said, my name is Sean Archibald, aka Sean Wisdom. You can find me on Instagram at Sean dot Wisdom, and I am the creative manager uh, currently at OTG Fitness. Also on Instagram, OTG Fitness, and also other uh, platforms. Um, yeah, if you want someone to kind of talk to about the creative process um i don't know everything but i think i know a good amount and i you know probably can help you along your way in your process so shoot me a dm um sean archibald on facebook if you wanted to talk on there as well yeah 
John, thank you for coming on. Really appreciate yeah. you spending some time with well, me thanks here. Thanks for having me, man. All right, guys, everybody, thank you. If you've gotten some kind of, uh, you know, benefit from this, you want to create something, you know, you, you're you looking for a little bit of wisdom, you got my man Sean here for it. As always, if you've gotten, once again, like, subscribe, share. We really do appreciate it. Try to give out the best. As always, I love y'all, and I'm praying for you. That was oh, sick. I like that one, man. Hell yeah, that was sick. <laughs>